The next day, Kyono and Nakima hurried towards the kitchens, where most of the castle's retainers met. Looking for clues, the two young girls were determined to make the most of the time they were given. It has been so long since the last time I came here. The place is so res as restless as in my memories. It was hard not to agree with the Harris. The kitchens were always strong with people, no matter the time of the day. Thanks, really, th thanks for bringing us to the kitchen. 3.30 am. And I'm totally not feeling hungry right now. But it would be a bad idea to eat something now. Uh, let's continue. Um, servants were hurriedly going in and out with a great bowl of plates and other seals, while a sweet scent was in the air. The cooks gathered around the great table and chatted in a general cacophony while making the kingly meal. If the kitchens are incommodious to you, princess, you can go back to the quarters to rest. It should be alright, Nahima. We are here to investigate. I don't intend to fall at the first hurdle. Very well. Let us question that group over there. They seem to have the gift of the grab. No sooner had she spoken, the lady's companion led Kion to a quieter corner of the room with a firm push of the hand. Two cooks and an assistant seemed more busy talking than peeling vegetables. Excuse me? They instinctively looked up at their interlocutor. Their expression changed completely upon noticing the princess. They all jumped in unison, and one of the cooks, bolder than her colleagues, moved forward to greet her. Your Majesty, it is an honor to see you among us today. Hmm. Hmm. The blonde is more my type. May I help you with anything? Would you like to know what we are cooking for tonight's meal? Okay. And is there here to learn the details about the preparation for the wedding ceremony? Well, actually, I. The other cook cleared her throat and elbowed her neighbor. Definitely a wondrous event, right, Adolfi? He answered with the same awkward tone. Absolutely, Mozart. We all are so proud of our princess. No, you are not. You all think this is a sick situation as well, right? Just like me. Please. The retainers were so profusely complimenting her out of courtesy that the princess could not speak as she wanted. However, she made a second attempt. To return to the reason of our presence, I would like to... Would you like me to guide you through the kitchen so that you can admire my work? <laughs> they won't let her finish to talk the talking, right? Nahima came closer to Kion and discreetly whispered to her. Princess, I'm afraid that the retainers will refuse to speak in your presence. They are too scared of displeasing you. I suggest you play along and follow Eleanor while pretending you are inspecting the kitchens. Meanwhile, I will question Adolfi and Belizende, who seem more flippant. This is unfair! No, this makes sense. I trust you. I suppose we can not help it. I will content myself with being at the diversion. Okay, I've seen this. I've seen this again. Be my eyes and ears, Nahima. I'm counting on you. Thank you, princess. I will be worthy of your trust. Have no fear. The curse immediately took a slightly more commanding tone. Very well. Let us go, Alino. Show me what you are doing. Right away, Your Majesty. Okay. Why? Why such far facial expression? I feel like. You know, you are the. It looks more like you are demanding it completely. You know. Uh. Very seriously, the servant took her role to heart and dragged Kiona a bit further away to the two of the retainers' relief. I thought my heart was going to burst. Tell me about it. Come here, Anna. Should not be allowed. I turned to Nahima with a derisive look. So, 
What about following her much all the time, not too hard? One wrong word and it's a dungeon for you. I would not feel it easy for you. You get used to it. Tell me, you seem to know quite a lot. And it's as it happens. I need some information. A cheering Rictus crossed Adelphi's face. Tell us. We'll see what we can do for you. Have you heard this rumor saying a fairy had been invited to the princess battle? The two servants threw knowing looks at each other while giggling. For sure, for sure. Melisande added very seriously. We even saw the fairy. Is it true? Could you tell me how to make her appear? I would. I too would like to meet her. We cannot tell you that. Why? Information such as this needs to be handled very carefully. We have to be sure you are sincere. By doing us a favor first. For instance, I have lost my purse. If you bring it back to me, I will tell you what I know. And how am I supposed to find it? I have left it in the library. No, on one of the desks. But I know what its contents are, so I can be sure it's yours. No way, this is a private matter. Retrieve it, or I will not tell you anything. What's this? Adelphi and Melisande refused to say more, leaving Rahima with only one possibility to bring the precious item back. Well, if that is so... Okay. Wait a second. <gasps> I can do stuff! Oh my god, this is so cool! Okay. Uh, page... No? <gasps> oh shit. Okay. Which page? Okay, so I'm on page one now. This is page two. Save. Okay, let's check the area. The retainers were working on a wooden table covered with victuals, each one more mouth watering than the last. Even if it was arduous to guess what was being stewed over the fire, the delicious odor that was coming from the pans put a stop to any sort of concentration. Oh, oh my god, I can travel! Hallway, kitchen, hallway... Uh, gar Where is the library? Hallway... Okay, so the whole area is a hallway. Bedroom... Kitchen... Li oh, oh! Cabinet. Okay, lumber, here we come. Nahima had always been surprised by how flippantly the books were put in order. It exemplified far too well how neglected the library was. Here, as she was glancing at the well stocked bookcase, the retainer could not help wondering if all those books were useful to someone. Here, Nahima caught sight of big lead rippers on one of the desks, just like Adelphi had told her. She took it without a eh, whiff, 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 whiff hesitation. Still, it is weird that he refused to tell me what is inside. And what would he do in library, since he does not know how to read? Only lettered people come here. Lost in fault, she did not hear the silhouette creeping behind her back. May I know what you are doing with my purse? Surprised, the human jolt and turned back towards her interlocutor. It was a young cleric that she had never seen before. Yuri cannot take it. I needed contents. How can I know it's yours? Open it, I have nothing to hide. There is a reed, pen and a clay tablet inside. This is the latest register about the distribution of the king's souls. I was looking for my equipment so that I could transcribe it on the general register in paper format. Glancing inside the purse, Nahima had to admit the young copist was right. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, two kitchen servants told me they had lost their purse here and that I had to retrieve it for them. Ah, uh, Adelph and... Melisande, I bet it is nothing, you know. He sat in front of the desk, shrugging with an apathetic look. Apathetic. Wait, no. Yes, apathetic, okay. My name is Constantine. Some of the servants had taken a dislike to me when I came here. They've never stopped playing pranks and making fun of me since I am used to it now. The lady companion could not help but give a faint and smile. I shall let them know what I think of such behavior. That is nice of you. Well then, I have to work on my register. Have an excellent day. Actually, can we talk? 
Constance seemed to be focused on his work that he forgot that he was present and she deduced it would be better to leave him alone. Okay. Should we go investigate other places as well? Cabinet. There seemed to be a meeting between all of the counselors in the king's cabinet. Whatever the important matter at the central council was, the retainer did not their approach until the assembly was over. Okay. I da -da, da -da. Okay, kitchen lighter. Bedroom. Nahima could not help but cast a glance at the dressing table to check her appearance. Almost without thinking, she passed a hand through her hair while whispering. Will you ever notice me? <gasps> whoa, whoa! Kiana's bedroom. Since she spent most of her time here, Nahima obviously knew every nook and cranny of it. Still, there was something almost magical about sitting quietly on this grain bed in the absence of the princess. This was unfortunately not enough to justify staying here when there were more urgent matters elsewhere. The servant's eyes were drawn to a spray of colors, as every morning she had brought a new bouquet to embellish the princess' room. Nahim was as proud of today's flower arrangement and she was counting on doing just as well the day after. Okay. Bedroom. Kitchen. Hallway. Garden. You know, maybe there will be some pears somewhere. The church plants were growing under the shade of the leaves. This was the place Nahimo went every morning to pick the fresh flowers and to decorate the princess room for the day. Uh huh, uh huh. The castle's fountain where the retainers come to draw water, which is necessary for a great number of tasks. When the weather is fair, it is tempting to come here to soak your feet in the water so as to cool off. Uh huh. Even if she was. Wait a second. Well acquainted uh, with the place, venturing to the garden still represented a brief of fresh air in this world made of stones. This was especially true on a beautiful day like this one. But I have my mission. It was in no way the time to double. God damn it. Maybe it was the time for that. Hallway. Some retainers were making haste through the castle corridors. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Okay, that's not really much information. Kitchen. Yo. Yeah. She came back to Alfie and Melissa and the Livid. You got me there, you rascals. Are you not ashamed for disturbing Constantine's work? The poor soul never asked for this. The two retainers giggled even more. Oh, it was just a prank. Nothing to gangry over. It's true. Moreover, he deserved it to have face like this, being so serious all the time. So this mockery it was. Are you going to tell me what you know, yes or no? Her looks become irritated. We know nothing of the princess buttons. We hadn't even been born at that time. If you really wish to meet your fairy that much, go see Bartholomew, one of the king's advisors. He should know something. I much prefer that. After meeting Kiona, who was ending her tour with Alinor, the young servant called the princess over to follow her. The princess followed her at once, too glad to escape. The two of them rushed towards her royal cabinet, where the counselors regularly gathered. Royal cabinet. Uh, stop. Go see Bartholomeus without you. He's right, we do not know more. Hmm. I feel like they know something. Alright, uh. He would be. He would be. Here? Are you the guy? Bartholomew! In the plunge, I'm surprised to see you, he says. It has been quite some time since the last time I saw you. Well, my presence seemed to be upset my father. Yeah, right. Nevertheless, you have grown up so fast. It is pity that you assume the throne in a more conventional matter. A hint of sun disappeared on the old man's face. You who know all, we represent Rigma Baptist. It is said a fairy was there. Well, I must tell that you have heard of this story. To be honest, as your mother's right hand at the time, I was invited to figure prominently. 
Unfortunately, I was sick after getting back drenched from an important journey a few days prior, to the extent I was far too ill to attend the festivities. God damn it! The princess looked so disappointed she could not hide it. Avray, if you really want to know more, I would advise you to find Jan, one of the laundry women. She is a discreet woman whom nobody ever notices, but she knows when and where to listen. She is aware of almost everything happening in the castle. She must have an acquaintance who could inform you. Hmm. So basically, she is like this old grandma uh, that you can notice in neighborhoods that sit in their window and observe the neighborhoods and they listen to everything and know everything, right? Well, hopefully she's not like that. She just like runs into place when something happens. We'll see. I'll ask her. Thank you, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. It is always a pleasure, princess. Take care of yourself. The two young girls left the council room unsatisfied. You told me you directed this man by the servants, but he knew nothing. Unfortunately, these are the hazards of an investigation. Princess, finding the right person can take some time. Admittedly, but time is going by, and I cannot afford to wander through the castle in this pivotal moment. I know, I know, I hope we'll have better luck with Jen. Yo, hey, do you know where she might be? No, thanks. Okay, if I were a laundry woman, where would I be? She could be in her bed, in, in bedroom, that's true. Kitchen, also maybe. Okay, let's check the bedroom. No. Garden? No. Hallway? Seriously? But you look so young! As she turned around on one of the corridors, Nakima caught a glimpse of a woman lifting huge baskets of laundry by herself. She stopped walking right away. Princess, I believe it's her! Stay here for a couple of minutes, I'm going to talk to her! Are you asking me to wait again? We cannot take the risk of her bowing down to you like the others, we are already running out of time! Very well, I'm not moving an inch from here! A lady's companion rushed forward to chase the retainer. It's me, are you John? I that's me. I've heard a rumor according to which a fairy was present during the princess baptism, and I was told you could tell me more about it. Damn, I did hear talk of a fairy story. The woman suddenly seemed to change her mind. I'm not being tricked or something like that, yes? What are you afraid of? She pranced about with an awkward look. The Finn is my colleague Clotilde, he isn't around today, and I don't know why at all. She must have met a boy and run away with him, but she could come back to Dame, I hope she will come back. I'm down, worried about her. Get straight to the point. Since I don't know if Clotilde's gonna come back or no, I'm replacing her so that no one finds out she's vanished. But that's way too much work for me alone. If you could help me call me to light the candles tonight, I'd go faster. It'd be bad to mess the job up. I promise to help you. That's brave of you, thanks God. I do what I say, I'm gonna bring you to old Victoria. Victoire, actually. After making reassuring the sure aimed at Kiona, Nahima followed the laundry woman to the castle's inner garden. In the remote nook, an old woman was spinning a thread with the distaff of her wheel while humming to herself. Jan briefly introduced Nahima to her friend. So, you want to learn more about the fairy? Okay, you also look young, however, Maybe the color of your hair suggests that you might have been there? Exactly, you were here during the parties, or so I heard. Did you see her? For sure! One cannot forget the face of such a creature. A preternatural presence emanates from fairies. Do you know how the queen managed to summon her to 
or how to contact her, I would like to meet her. The old woman chuckled. <laughs> that is a rather presumptuous wish, but so be it. I remember perfectly since I was in the front seats. The queen had let me sit there as a reward for years of good and faithful service. I saw the fairy hand over a silver whistle to her. She was close enough for me to hear her words. Use this to summon me, she said. Really? A whistle? Huh. Interesting. Nahia was taken back, so there was a way to call the fairy. Impatient, she pressed Victoria more for more information. Do you know what happened to the whistle? I don't know for sure, but I think it was put away with the queen's belongings. Oh my god, I hope they didn't dig her into the ground with that <laughs> whistle. That would be problematic. Nobody must have been touched it since her death, so she still be in the disused wing of the castle, in one of the cabinets. I gather you cannot be more precise than that. Unfortunately, young lady, you should really be glad that I was able to help you. Nobody remembers the fairy no more. Incidentally, tell me if you see her. I'll be curious to know what she's doing nowadays. I will. I will. I definitely will. Thank you for me, Victoire. Victoire. Vic Vic Victoire. Yes. I mean, it. I. I feel like it's the French version of Victoria, but how to spell it correctly? Ah, that will be a that will be bothering me for a while. You're welcome, young lady. This is really not much. Ah, then it made me have to dive back into those old memories. It is one more thing I have accomplished. One more thing I can be proud of. You will come see me again, won't you? Of course I will. I will glad will. Alright. The wing, the wing, the wing. Where is the cabinet? Library. Hallway, hallway, hallway. What the hell? Hallway, 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 hallway. Nothing here. Library. Cabinet. Bedroom. Okay, let's go to here. I wish to find Jan and you, as you suggested, she was able to interview someone who saw the fairy. I'm quite glad to hear the princess. I've made myself useful to you at least once. Don't be so harsh on yourself. This wish which my father was caused by many different factors. You would not have been able to do anything about it. I know this all too well. However, I can't help but be riddled with guilt. I promised you your late mother to watch over your future and I failed miserably. Regrets are pointless, Bartholomew. My mother would have certainly agreed. You are probably right, but I'm still hoping for a king to have a realization. I will pray for you. Thank you, and being so to me. This is the least I can do. Uh, you could give me a freaking. The Council of Ministers of Meeting. Okay, that's the same text. Uh, the key to the area I need to access or something like that? Hallway, maybe? Uh, the servant came back to the hearse to tell her about the heroic service. Kiona was immediately relieved to learn where the whistle was located. It's wonderful, Nahima. Who could have thought we would trace back the first lead? All we have to do now is ser see, search the abandoned wing. Not so fast, princess. The sun has already started to set. It is far too late to do so today. We'll go there tomorrow. You're right, and we would not see a thing without light in anyway. My only hope is that my toilet is not ready yet. There is only one way to find out. Go back to your quarters. Princess, meanwhile, I've promised Jen to help her. The two young girls parted ways for the evening. Can't you forget the freaking candle and go there? You are only looking for a whistle. Well, not really only, but I, I believe it would be possible to find it with just a candle. Okay, suddenly the workers were even quicker than the day before and the dress. The color of the moon was brought to her without delay, along with the same order as before. 
Well, I mean, you can see the moon, so it is easier to easier to to tell what color it is and so on. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure if that is really the color of moon, but let's say it is. I mean, how would I know? You know, there are so many weird colors created right now. You know, with the weird names and so on, it's, I wouldn't know what, what the actual color of the moon would be. Whatever. Wearing that new toilet, she went to the royal cabinet as distraught as the other times. The rich dressing was as splendid as the 90 celestial body, me making the young princess look even more sublime. In her confusion, she then asked for a dress as bright as the sun, and the king accepted only if she swore she would have enough dress from now until the wedding. Well, if you can get dresses, you can get other stuff. You can, you still can ask for chivalry, for example. And so the little game continued. When the first rays of the sun hit Kiona's numb eyelids, she already knew that they would be laborious, but she could not imagine what the next one would look like yet. Oh. With one mind, Nahima and Kiona had set a goal to explore the derelict wing of the castle, where the queen's cabinet still was. The magic whistle would most certainly be in the efforts of the deceased. Okay, so now. I can't really do anything. Just this once, the servant was looking quiet, almost impassive. How should we proceed, princess? There is a lot of ground to cover, and there are only two of us. Is something wrong, Nahima? You seem nervous. Well, the king made it very clear. He would not give you any more clothes. Our plan until now was to stall for as much time as possible. I'm afraid we no longer have room to maneuver. If we do not find that whistle today, we'll have failed. I told you, Javelry. Don't worry about me, we'll find a solution, right? It does not sound like you to be pessimistic, Nahima. The servant lady nervously rubbed her ear, blushing. You're right, princess. It is my duty to always keep your morale up. I cannot lose heart now. Much better. Operation Whistle, begin. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now that I think about it, the whistle part brings back, well, not really bad memories, but brings back memories from university. First semester, mathematics, and really, the lecturer was making some suggestive, suggestive comments. To female part of the of the of the group using the word whistle and yeah mm. that old guy well I wonder if he's still there if so then I feel bad for females that have to listen to him but back to the game. Kyun Nahima entered the first dusty room. So I can't really choose the room, huh? This one. A table covered with sumptuous vases in porcelain of China. It is said that the deceased queen loved to collect items from all around the world and that she had planned to build a place where her citizens could admire them. Unfortunately, that, that project never came to fruition. Sorry. If I were a whistle, where would I hide? I think not in the place with Chinese va vases and so on actually. Maybe it will be here. An ebony statue depicting a woman, symbol of fecundity, probably a souvenir the queen kept 
south of Africa, which she had wanted to visit. Okay. And all the magnificent gilded clock. Its hands do not move. It is almost as if the flow of time itself has been frozen since the tragedy. Mirror, past mirror that covers most of the world. The items the queen were, was especially fond of are exposed on the piece of furniture below. More vases in porcelain of China. The queen's personal collection must be worth a fortune. A good thing to know should the country have financial trouble. Nice. A wooden music box. When someone opens it, a soft melody is played. Okay, open it then. No. Alright. Well, it sure is dusty. Have I finished exploring the room? No. I mean, I don't see the whistle or anything here. And it seems like I can only click where the magnifying glass is, so yeah, I guess so. Or maybe just in case do this. I think this is all for this cabinet princess. I do not see any nook that could have escaped our attention. Let us move on to the next room. We'll eventually end up finding what interests us. Maybe. Hmm, I will look here. Maybe in cabinet or some drawer, basically. The two young girls continued exploring with restlessness. restlessness. The second room was filled with all kinds of paintings. A large harp covered in dust. It is said that the keys woman a eh, woman the keys well woman true but queen is written here. The the keys queen was an excellent musician and that she sometimes gave small private performances. In a pillow, a couch accompanied by goose feather cushions. It appeared to still be in good condition and it looks especially comfortable. A great number of canvases have been stored in this room. It most probably is a decision of the king, unwilling to see the paintings depicting his beloved wife. He asked them to be removed and stored far from his eyes. Pretty sure that picture is not of her, his wife. A canvas which has been torn down with a blade. It is still possible to rec recreate this picture from its shreds. Yes? Whoa, okay, puzzles. Puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. Oh, pa, pa. Okay, you will, will be. Okay, good. It catches the. It catches the borders. Okay, so it's the mother, I guess. From my perspective. Posing. That's pretty cool, really. Oh, that. Do 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 do. do. Once the work had been completed, the princess could finally uncover the mysteries for torn canvas. It was a portrait of her late mother. The young woman gasped while staring at the picture. The mother was needed a spitting image of her daughter, and she was so beautiful. Kiona suddenly felt aggrieved. She would have loved to have been able to spend more time with her, to know more about her. Hmm. No whistle on the portrait. While admiring the canvas, representing her Baptist Kiona could not help but feel a twinge of sorrow. All the guys looked so happy. Can't you see uh, the fairy then on it? Guess not. Yeah. There's nothing else catching my attention, princess. I hope our research will be more fruitful in the next cabinet. I hope so too, Nahima. This time is running dangerously low. There is the donkey. Two, I mean, on the canvas. Two, the hers pushed the door of the third room. Her retainer still following in her footsteps. 
The staring in front of them was not that different from the previous attempts. Even so, hope had not left them yet. A tiny spark was still shining in their hearts. Oh, I guess I know where it might be. But let's check other areas to get more information about everything. Got to explore the game. A huge chimney fills a good part of the room. This one had to be inhabited for its occupant to see fit to install something like that here. A piece of furniture filled with a few books. There's no doubt that the queen must have only taken the books she liked or read the most. Strangely enough, there is a copy of The Art of War written by a certain Sun Tzu. A gigantic tapestry is hanging on a wall. The picture symbolizes the queen guiding her people. Okay. The queen's working desk. Let us see what those drawers contain. Nahima pointed at the bottom of the drawer with ex excitation. Princess, could it be? There is only one way to find out. We have to use it. With a pounding car, the hearse grasped the item and blew with all her might, as she mentally prayed for the stratagem to work. A heavy silence followed the sound of the whistle. Whoa, 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 whoa. All of a sudden, a burst of wind rising up out of nowhere entered the room, as purple reflections shaded the walls. A gleaming orb appeared before the two stunned girls. As they were awaiting, shivering a powerful voice echoed through the cabinet. Hey, 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 hey! Who is calling me? Who dares to interrupt my sleep? Me? Eh? Sorry about that? Fearful, Nahima hid behind the princess, not daring to look away from the apparition. She had never seen a fear before and there was something Eve inspiring about the apparition. Kiona was not confident either, but she felt she had to speak. Godmother, I'm Prince Kiona. I have heard that my mother had requested you to give me the fairy's blessing, and I could ask for your assistance. Is this true? Princess Kiona, that name does ring a bell. You were well informed. That was used used to contact me is the proof. I'm indeed your godmother. What can I do for you? The two girls sighed with relief. The orb that was spinning in the middle of the room did not seem hostile. Although Kiona was not superstitious, she had to face the facts. Nahima was right all along. Ferris did exist. Told you. Regaining courage, the Harris raised her voice. Uh -oh. The thing is, Monsieur, my father, has gone mad. He claims that he will marry me at once and I do not know what to do. Hmm. What a curious story. And you hope to borrow my power so you can get yourself out of this bad situation. That is right. Well, maybe not really borrow powers, but you know, help find solution. Uh, you know. Let's not go that far as borrowing powers. Really, you should act like that. <laughs> I suppose you're ignorant of how our relationship with a fairy and human being works. But let me warn you, it will not be easy. To begin with, I can appear in your world to assist you, but it will require several hours. Kiona's smile abruptly disappeared. The servant and the princess stared at each other in dismay. Sorrows, but come on, This is quite the urgent matter. I must meet my father in a few hours to confirm my wedding wolves, and he swore he would execute me if I did not conform to his order. Honestly, I think I would still prefer execution. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I cannot do differently. You see, fairies come from a parallel world where time flows in a different way. Even if I hurry, I would not be able to materialize correctly in your world with a snap of my fingers. And you would not want me to appear with only a fragment of my powers, would you? If you really need me, you will have to wait. But once you get here, you will be able to help me, right? I will not lie, you have to observe some rules to get the right to borrow my powers. But if you abide by them, there is no reason why I should not be able to help you. 
The apparition's answer was not entirely satisfying, but Kiona hardly had a choice. Overcoming her fear, Nahima slowly came away from her mister's shoulders. Fairies are not orbs of colorful light like I'm seeing you right now. The voice let a chuckle slip. The echo magnified the power of that sound, making the young girls shudder. Nah, that's not my true form. Only a very convenient means of communication. I will let you know, dear ladies, that I do not like to come out for nothing. Usually, I would not have even answered at all. However, I promise a promise. Fairies are always true to the reward, and I did give you my blessing. Oh, how I regret it right now. That's probably what she said, uh, what she thought. I look forward to meeting you in the flesh, then. I have always dreamed of seeing a fairy with my own eyes. The walls shook again with the benevolent laugh of the preternatural, preternatural being. Oh, but you will see me soon enough. I'll be in your room by tomorrow afternoon, Kiona. Until then... Be patient. Wink wink. With those few words, a new burst of wind made the cabinet tremble, and the purple orb disappeared as it had come. Now that I think about it. Um, we could have asked about... Um, all the matters that are required, you know, for the fairy to actually help and so on, because we don't know this. What are the requirements she mentioned? They could work on them right now, right? Maybe? A bit? But I guess they... The two of them haven't really thought about that. Shaken, the maidens felt like they had just woken up from a dream. 